Joey, imagine if when you first got out of college, the very first thing somebody would have introduced you to was a land flipping podcast, something that would have showed you how to buy and sell raw land, turn it into monthly note income that would grow so rapidly it would force you to make a decision of do I continue down the path that I've been trained in from my college education or do I go down a path of full-blown entrepreneur creating income streams living a a, a a lifestyle that doesn't have time and location borders on it I don't think that's a hard decision Russ because at the time I was lacing up my white tennis shoes, putting on my khaki shorts and my white polo and running cars back and forth to hotel guests at a local hotel. Like you were a valet. I was a valet. I was a professional valet. I'll say that once you get your, your degree, you realize <laughs> man, I, I can now say You're I'm a pro- certified valet, you know, like wait, I'm wait, wait a second. A different so level. when you, when you get a degree from college, you go from just a regular valet to a professional valet. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's a small difference, but it may, it, it makes a difference. <laughs> Do you they know? pay you more? I, I'd like to say my income went up. I mean, let's just say that the tips were flowing like honey, you know? Oh, so and, what were you carrying? Like your diploma in your shirt pocket? How did they know to tip you more? You just you just put it behind a stand and, and people are like oh that looks really good there you know no, hey, that's I, actually I not that. a bad idea by the way you put your college <laughs> diploma behind the stand of the valet desk people have got to tip you to go dude <laughs> this guy's struggling <laughs> hey I will say this at the time I was newly married and I was you know putting those tennis shoes on every day and I thought to myself what have I done like, <laughs> that gives the whole new name. Joey, that gets a whole new name to side hustle. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I would have been thrilled to have been turned on to land flipping at that age. And it would have been a major difference in the trajectory of my life. But this podcast is not about me, Russ. It's not about you. It's no. about our good our friend Brent Bowers, who took the plunge and he he, he actually figured out along the way that being present has a big impact on your life, on relationships, on your family. And I'm not going to give away all the things that he learned from that, but I will tell you that that is a theme that comes with financial freedom. If you're not present, your life is not as rich as it could be. I I would say that my, my one class in psychology was not enough for the questions I started diving into with him. And, and I, mean, I felt like he was laying on that couch right behind your right shoulder right now. <laughs> yep. And I was Dr. Phil in that dude. So it, it's a very interesting podcast, but more importantly, inspiring to, to help you see that there are so many different pathways to financial freedom. And while every one of them doesn't go through short-term rental or land flipping or ATM investing or single family home investing or multifamily home investing. There's so many different opportunities that you can find. And this one, as we aptly named Joey, that land, because land is where Brent started and it's led to many other things can be the gateway drug to financial freedom. So let's jump in right now with our new friend, Brent Bowers. Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now, here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome into the show. You're in for a treat. Today we have Brent Bowers joining us. Brent, so glad to have you, man. Hey, great to be here. Maybe the most interesting backdrop that we've had so far on the show, Joey, that the Brent rhino. has like a like a rhinoceros like charging after him. It's almost like he's like on the scene of Jumanji or something. <laughs> I need to make it where I'm like sitting on top of it. Uh, that would maybe be better, but uh, it came from the book Rhinoceros Success. 
uh, by Scott Alexander. Great, amazing read. You know, audible, 30 minute audible, beautiful story. Uh, but it's, we always have to be charging every single day when we wake up. You know, the rhinoceros has three inch thick skin and he takes torpedoes on a daily basis. And that's what we are as, you know, business people. Oh, I love that, nice. man. And a 30 minute audible book, man, that's something that I can even stay awake and listen to. Yeah. Hopefully if you're driving, you, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's been moments, right? I got angry at my wife. One time we were driving home late and she woke me up and I was like, why are you waking me up? She's like, cause you're driving. Yeah. Yeah. It's your turn to drive. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's not where we want to start though. So I, I do want to take you back to a moment that I have the uncanny ability of asking the tough questions at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. There was a time in, in your life that was probably not super exciting for you where you were going through a divorce. You had been in the military for a long period of time and, and you were experiencing something that many people have, have gone through, but not just what that was doing, but why that was happening. Can you take yeah. us back to that moment? And talk a little bit about that. Man, I figured we'd like get to know each other a little bit before we start. <laughs> hey, man, you got the rhino coming and charging it. out of the wall. I feel like I'm just going to be that rhino and just charge right onto this thing. You're the torpedo that the rhino just took. Um, so, <laughs> no, I love talking about my personal problems all over the world. And I, I know you guys have a listenership on the Wealth Without Wall Street like no other. So let's just bring it. Um, you know, so I was. So I, I joined the military October 2009, and I pretty much was in basic training for three months and then AIT training for six months and got to see my, my wife. This is my first wife. And I got to see her for a few months, and then we're moving to Germany. And I get to Germany. I'm there for a couple months. We're training up, and then I leave for literally 364 days in Afghanistan. That's the first deployment. I'm back. And then we have a little break and then we're training quite a bit of the time while we're there. And when I say training, like usually it's in the field far away from home. So you don't get to come home at night and sleep and see your loved ones. And then guess what? I'm gone for another nine months on a deployment. Well, about four years time frame happened and I was maybe only home about a year of that time, you know, in my own personal bed. And my wife got sick of it. Like my, my first wife, um, she's like, look, I'm out of here. I was, I was in Afghanistan. This time I was in uh, Camp Leatherneck, Afghanistan, RC South. And it just like hit me like a, like a ton of bricks. Like, you know what, you stupid idiot. Of course she's gone. Like you're never there. Um, so that happened to me early in life in 2013. Um, and it taught me a lot of things like how to be a better husband and now how to be a better father. And that was my pivotal point. And when I met my current wife now, we got married, we, we had a kid very soon, and I was about almost a year and a half into my son's life, like he's only a year and a half old now, and I realized I'd only seen him for about four months of his life. So history was now repeating itself. And that's when I realized, holy cow, this is never going to happen to me again. I'm going to do everything I can to change the, the, my future to where I'm now home on a daily basis. I'm going to build a financial fortress around me that nothing can get through. I'm going to have financial freedom and time freedom to, so I can do what I want to do and live life on my terms. So, so it's interesting because a lot of times people are either going towards something or running away, just like that rhino is uh, yep. in your back. It sounded like the first thing for you was running away yep. from pain. Absolutely. I'm a way from pain kind of person. I'll trip over a dollar bill to, you know, get those three quarters. And most people are, are like that. They're running away from something. I am motivated by, by loss, not gain. So but tell us what, how did you determine what was going to be that vehicle or that means to get you away from that? Yeah, it started I had already started in buying rentals before I ever even joined the military. And that was okay. That was not doing too well, honestly. Um, and then it became wholesaling houses. And then I stumbled on the greatest passive income generation tool there is, and that's land. Um, so it was almost like a one, two, three type evolution, like where I just kept learning and learning and learning and searching for answers and listening to wealth without wall street podcasts. And, I was 
wholesaling these houses, paying down the debt that I'd accumulated for private school because the army sent me to college too. Like they, they took me out of enlisted and sent me to be an officer, paid me to go to college. I picked a private school. I'm also buying houses as rentals during that time, building my, my empire up. But these are all fixer uppers. They're, they're like junky houses that I racked up debt. So I'm wholesaling houses to pay it off and also build, build up income. And I just kept running into an issue. It's like, you got to spend a lot of time with these sellers and create rapport and figure out the problems that they're having, the challenges that you could provide as a solution for them to sell you the house at a discount. And that takes hours sometimes. Well, I was working 13 hour days, had a new wife, had a new baby. And I was like, there's gotta be a better way to do this. And I had just hired a team member to help me answer the calls because I was back on that training cycle. Like we're always going to the field. So I'll send out $5,000 worth of postcards that I paid for with Amex. And then I can't take the phone calls and I lost all those leads. And I heard a guy on a podcast talking about land. And I was just so blown away because I was avoiding the land. I mailed the land the next day and that's where life changed. It, how, what is that biggest difference there? So like, obviously though, you, you still were gone. Were you not getting return phone calls when people were, yeah. were returning your, your emails uh, or your postcards on the land as compared to when you're trying to buy houses? The biggest difference at that time was the land sellers didn't care about meeting me. They, I didn't have to go sit at their house on their dirty, stinky cat pee couch and like smell like garbage when I left there. I, I can't, I've, I've purchased over 400 parcels of land. I maybe have met four, eh, that's, that's a little crazy, 10 or 12 of those sellers. Wow. That's a big deal. I mean, the cat pee alone will, will just get you to go the other way. <laughs> I remember when my son was like, I don't know, like eight, eight or nine months old, I took him to go look at a property because I was like, I'm going to use this little guy as a rapport builder. She loves kids. She's got horses. We're going to, we're going to make a fun time out of this. Like I'm going to get the, Zechariah is going to get to see the horses. I'm going to buy the house. We did not buy that property by the way, but I'm sitting there on this couch and my son kept getting off my lap and I'm like, please don't touch anything. Like ceiling tiles were falling in. I'm pretty sure one of us is going to have mesothelioma from sitting in that house. But like that was, <laughs> a disgusting house and i'm now bringing my child into this as well i feel uh, kind of bad about it still to this day all right so um i feel like a dr phil episode here at, or, <laughs> or maybe jerry springer i don't know what it is because i'm asking i'm going to ask a qu another question though that you kind of left hanging when you talked about the the first marriage went bad because you're always gone right and then you mentioned that you you get remarried but you're still traveling you're still in the military you're still going out into the field and you're you're losing money when you're having to go out in the field from the uh, not being able to meet uh, all the buyers from houses you were mailing but now you started buying land what changed though as far as you being around how did that change that didn't change until may 2018 uh until i got out of the military and now I had the fortunate, like we bought it. It's so funny. I, I, I was so used to always being gone. I bought an office building in Colorado Springs and I was going every day. Like, and I was like finding myself there. I was like, wait a minute, I, I'm still on this treadmill. And now the office is rented out. Uh, no one uses it. None of my team uses it because we love working from home so much. Now I get to work. I have my own office wing in my house and my wife, wife works like literally 50 feet away from me in her office. So we can see each other when we want. We have day dates, like I'm home. Well, basically I drove my daughter and my son to school this morning and I'll be there tonight when they get home from school. So was so, the biggest difference was, is that you were painting a picture for your wife now of this, this is the date I'm gonna be out. And when I'm out, here's what it's going to look like because I've already been building this process. You hit it on the head, Dr. Phil. Um, Absolutely. And I'll tell you, did it happen like that? I, I promise. I made that promise. I remember sitting there one night, just trust me, it's not always going to be like this. And it was like this up until about. So as entrepreneurs, as business people, I feel like we go, you know, we go up and we down. We run for a little while. We jog for a little while. We sprint for a little while. Then we walk for a little while. And I stayed in sprint mode. And my wife's like, I rem you told me, like you promised me, like 
this was all going to change because when I got out of the military, guess what? Everything expanded this, um, like all these opportunities now, because I have now 24 hours a day to figure out what I want to do because the military is not telling me what to do anymore. And guess what? Opportunity flooded it. And my children and my wife started taking the back seat again. And thank God my wife called me out one day and was like, look, you're back on that path again. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. We have all these land notes paying us every month. We're paid sometimes five or six times a day. I don't have to run this hard. And it's just, I almost feel like it's like a lot of business people need to hear that. It's like, what, when is it enough? Like how much more do you need type thing? So I hope I answered the question, Russ. I kind of went all around it. No, I think a hundred percent. I mean, Joey tells this story almost every podcast that he's interviewed on because he doesn't know what else to say, but I've heard it a thousand <laughs> times. It seems like, but it, it really is very similar, right? That even as entrepreneurs or as well-paid professionals, we tend to not be present. We tend to pour our life into one thing. We're as, especially if we're men, a lot of times very single track focus, right? Give us one thing. We just do it. And it's usually work. And we do that one thing and we don't know what else to do. We we have our self-worth in, in that job, right? Like that's why as men, like within first 10 seconds after saying, hey, how's it going or whatever, it's what do you do for a living, right? Because that's <laughs> the thing that we we hold our value in and we want to be good at it. We're competitive people. So I, I, I see that. I, I understand that. I, I'm grateful that you're sharing and being vulnerable. I didn't know that we were going to do this here, but man, like <laughs> this is an opportunity, right? This opportunity to That's get right. vulnerable. So, so talk a minute, Brent, about just some of the question marks in your head before you made that transition, transition from having that steady income of the military to letting that go. And now all of a sudden, you said all, all this opportunity filled the time, but what was what were some of the question marks you had before making that transition? Like, how is this going to work, or or anything like that? Shoot, man, are we allowed to cuss on this show? <laughs> I was <laughs> I was like ready to, you know, just as one of my students says, like throw up in my on my shoes. I was ready to like I, I felt like I was going to get an ulcer, you know, while getting out of the military because now I have two children, one on the way and I'm getting out and I'm leaving this, this opportunity. And I had so many people try and talk me out of it. Oh my gosh, you have eight and a half years. Just go a little longer. You'll have a retirement a little longer. Like I, I got probably six more deployments ahead of me, um, type thing. So I had so many things like, how am I going to pay for insurance? Uh, are we going to be able to keep our house? Are we going to be able to keep the car? And then I look back and it's like, wait a minute, why am I even worried about this? And usually I would worry about these things in the middle of the night. That's why they call them sleepless nights. When we wake up refreshed, the things we worried about the night before are usually not as big of deals. It's like, why was I laying there thinking about that for three and a half hours last night? And it's like, that's when the boogeyman comes out. Like that's when all these things creep up. So I had so many fears. I was scared to death. And then I kept, I had to remind myself, it's like, wait a minute. I literally have three months left until I get out because the army gave me what's called an internship. I interned for Wholesaling Inc. And I interned for like, I interned and I actually got to work on my own business. And I, I had to remind myself was, wait a minute, I'm currently making a little over $9,000 a month every single month on land payments. If I don't work for the next five years, those are going to keep coming in. Yeah, some of them might default. Some of them will default, but I'll just resell the land. And my payments, my, 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 my expenses were only like 4,800 at that time. So I'm double, like I'm financially free and I also have time freedom because I don't have to work anymore. Um, and that, oh, by the way, I can move anywhere I want to because the money comes in my bank account every single day or that time I wasn't being paid every single day, but multiple times a month. And then I would just remind myself all these things that, that has been prepared for. And when I got out month of May, I had a $55,000 a month and I think that was just God's way of saying like, look, you made the right decision. Keep going. <laughs> and, uh, I was just like, fine. After that, I never, I never looked back. This podcast is amazing. Almost too amazing. Russ, there's too many ideas and I don't know where to get started creating passive income. 
Well, here's the thing, Joey. I think one of the things you need to consider in that statement is what is it costing you to not know? What is it costing you not to take action? I love the statement that says you don't have to be great to start. You just have to start to be great. If you're struggling on where to start, you have to know what type of investor you are. Know your investor DNA. And if you want to learn more about this, you can join us in our Passport Challenge at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash Passport. Get started today. It, you know, I, I share all the time when people ask me some of my favorite books, and one of them is a book by Darren Hardy called The Entrepreneur Roller Coaster. But it's about an eight-hour read or listen. It, what you just went through is The Entrepreneur Roller Coaster in about 10 minutes. So, man, we're, we're knocking books out. Uh, you know, in, in a hurry here. I, I love that. And I want to talk a little bit about, so you dropped a nugget in there. You said, I had $9,000 a month of note payments coming in from the land. That blows a lot of people's mind because they may be real estate investors. Maybe they have been, you know, gathering up single family properties and making 150 to $250 a month per property. And they're trying to do the math and say, how many houses would I have to have in order to get $9,000 a month net. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, and to, to tell you exactly how many I had was, I think, right at 21 at that time. Um, 21 parcels of land. I did have the rentals. Those things weren't making jack daily. Um, I did sell quite a few of them now, that around 2020. So I'm really happy I bought those crap holes back in 2012 <laughs> and seven and all that. Um, actually, the one I bought in 2007, I sold for this exact same amount I purchased it for in 2020. So bad buy on my part, but that was my first buy and I pulled the trigger. But how did I do that? How did I get 20 something parcels of land that were free and clear, no debt? All I had to worry about was paying the taxes and my land buyer was paying me every single month and we would escrow those taxes in. So if the taxes were $1,200 a year, which none of my land deals had that high of a tax amount, by the way, I would collect $100 a month and we would put it in this account and we would pay those tax bill. I usually pay it with my Amex, so I get Sky Miles and then I pay the Amex off. So it's a really cool like arbitrage. Um, we pretty much fly everywhere for free, um, except for my, when my wife goes, she likes to do the first class stuff. So we end up having to pay a little bit extra. Um, but when I go, I'll sit right next to the toilets. I don't care. I'm, I was in the military. I've slept under generators go, flying to Afghanistan. Um, <laughs> but how did I do it? was it started with the first land deal it was a tax delinquent list i thought it was the tax delinquent list it was actually the the list that was like below that it was a list of tax delinquent parcels of or tax delinquent delinquent properties that even a tax lien investor wouldn't even pay the back taxes because the land sucked so bad it was not buildable it was inefficient not accessible you name it there was an issue with it the first parcel i bought it was actually two lots for 285 bucks not buildable because it only had one ingress egress and it was the side of a mountain and the firefighter would not firefighters would not allow you to build because they can't get pinned down out there um so i sold it to a realtor though a realtor that was very familiar with the area for five thousand and the next one for 400 a month and the next one for uh i think the next one i sold i actually assigned the contract so i just kept building up my my reserves um but that second one was we're going to talk about another book you know, Stephen Covey talks about the paradigm shift. That second parcel of land, I was a little nervous about this one because I bought it for 500. Like I was breaking the bank on that one. And I got, I put it on Craigslist like the night I bought it because I was like, I got to get this thing out of here. I want my 500 bucks back. I got diapers to buy and a mortgage payment to pay. So I put it for 500 down. I remember the guy calls me on a Sunday and I try not to work on a Sunday um, for the day of rest and whatnot. But at that time I was working seven days a week trying to build up to get out of the military. And he says, I'll give you 500 down. And I was asking for 400 a month. And we wrote a contract, we call it a contract for deed. And I own the land, I bought it for 500. So I got my money back out. I got my security back out. And every single month, this guy paid on time $400 a month. And that's what changed my thinking. And that's what basically brought me to the world of seller financing and passive income. Because this guy is covering my truck payment every single month and i remember talking to my wife it's like if we just keep doing this we'll have the electric payment paid and then we'll have the mortgage payment paid and before we know it we'll have all of our payments paid and then i can get out of the military that's so cool so now your wife is 
tied into the story because she can allocate certain bills with certain land payments. Yes. Oh my gosh. Like right now I want to buy a huge boat and the boat <laughs> I want is like 138,000. And I was like, Oh my God, what a waste of money. But guess what? The payment's only 1100 a month. That's like two land deals. Does she, that also, does she talk it, like that now? But she's like, oh, wait a minute. How many land deals is that? No, she just lets me do my thing. <laughs> she's a writer. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what you just said is that I can buy a $138,000 boat with how much money would it take you to buy those two pieces of property to turn them into $1,100? So that's a great question. So let's, let's, well, I haven't backwards planned it. I actually just had this thought this morning, by the way. Um, but that let's think about this. So my average land payment right now is about three hundred and ninety one dollars. So let's just call it four hundred bucks, four eight twelve. So let me let me back step here. It would actually probably take three parcels of land uh, at four hundred dollars each to pay for that boat payment. Now let's back up. Um, right now I'm getting three ninety one a month for about my thirty and forty five thousand dollar parcels of land. I generally like to pay about one third the price. So if, if I'm buying a piece of land for 15,000, I want that land to be worth about 45, 15, 30, 45, like a three X return. And that came from Warren Buffett. Like he has a, some amazing books. He talks about how he wants to do 300% return. It's almost like the margin of safety. Um, and I believe that came from Benjamin Graham, the intelligent investor. So Warren Buffett didn't even create it. But that margin of safety gives us like a, like if all hits the fan, that $45,000 property might go, go down to 15,000 if, if the, the bucket, like the market just collapses. But I bought it for 15,000. I've still got, you know, a good asset. And then I sell it to someone for, you know, five, six, seven thousand dollars down or preferably 15,000 down and I get all my money back out of the, out of the deal and I finance it to them for 12% interest. So I'm buying an asset for 15,000, it's worth 45,000, and I'm letting someone make payments to me and they're paying interest. Let's just say I didn't have the 15 grand to buy it. Well, my mother-in-law does, and I pay her 9% interest. I'm only paying her 9% interest on 15 grand, and I'm getting 12% interest on 45, <clears throat> positive arbitrage. So, so just to break that down, for you to buy that boat for 140,000, it would take you the equivalent of around 45000 to buy the land to, to finance it. Beautiful. Yes, absolutely. Yes, 100%. And you're increasing the price of this boat, man. Quit making <laughs> well, I, I mean, <laughs> well, you think about it, you're buying it for like 30% of what it, it truly costs. I mean, that's the thing. I, I mean, I, I just made a, a deposit on a, on a, on a fancy new car. Joey knows about it. He thinks I'm stupid, but I'm like, Hey, look, how many short-term rental, how many land deals, how, how many ATM machines does it take to make this payment? I'm not going to make the payment. I'm definitely not going to pay what the car is worth. I'm going to pay a fraction of that. And I'm going to allow the payments to make that, that deal happen. And, and then I'm going to talk about it on this podcast and it's basically going to be free because there's going to be people who want to figure out how to do that and who want to join our mastermind or who want to join the inner circle. I mean, yes. look, it, it becomes free. This is what's fun about this when you know how to make money, right? Oh man. So good. And I, I did not create this either. Like I'm pretty sure I took this from Robert Kiyosaki because he talked about, I think him and his wife wanted the, some super fancy car and a Porsche. Yeah. And they're like, well, let's buy a property that pays for it. So it's like, there's no original thoughts out there. And I just pulled up um, loancalculator.net or calculator.net and I put in 45,000 and I put the loan term for 30 years at 12% interest. That payment is going to be 462 a month. But here's what's really cool. I'm going to collect a total of 166,000 over 30 years for that one $45,000 property. And that bank or that boat's going to be paid off in 15 years. So I'm going to keep collecting way after that boat's paid for. So wow. let's talk about the process. Someone who's never done this, right? Did you start by buying properties that were worth 45,000? You said, that's kind of an average. What, what did that look like on the beginning? How did you get to where you are? Yeah. So I talked about the first deal was 285. I flipped it to a realtor the next day for five grand. 
Um, and guess how I found this realtor? I had no clue what the land was worth. So I called the real estate office right, right down the street. And she's like, well, heck, I'll buy it from you. And I was like, what are you offering? She said five grand. And I was like, let's do it. And I was hooked. I was like, there's no way this can be that easy. Like there, this is a, like if mother said it's too good to be true, it definitely is. So I did it on the second one. I sold that land for 500 down, 400 a month. That one was for a total of five grand and I paid it 500 for it. So another 10 X right there. And I'm all, I'm doing, I did 0% interest on that because I didn't know we could charge interest. Like I was like, oh, I want to give a great deal. The third one um, was another, like, I think of like a $1,500 property. The fourth one was where like my mind was blown. A bank called me about 44 acres next to Shriver Air Force Base in Colorado Springs. And I'm like negotiating hard with this bank. I thought it was like, this is never going to happen. I'm just going to give him all I got. I was like, I want it for 20,000. Like, and he was a really nice guy. And he's like, no, no way. And I knew the land. I didn't really know what the land was worth, but I knew it was worth well over 80 something thousand dollars. But I was too scared. I wanted to buy it for so cheap because I was scared. And I didn't know what I was going to do if he did say yes. Well, we kept going back and forth for weeks. And he finally called me on a Friday. I'm sitting at my office desk. I'm, a, I'm an executive officer for a forward support company right now. We're basically supporting the uh, infantry guys. And I'm like, hide in my office. I close the door. Yes, Mr. Banker. Like, I'm like, yes, sir. No, sir. Because, you know, he's a higher, like, I'm talking to an authority figure here. Um, and he goes, look, I won't take 20. I'll give it to you for 25. You need to sign the contract right now. And like, I took a deep breath and said, yes, sir. Send it. And actually, no, I sent him the purchase agreement. He's like, We're, you need to get me the purchase, the contract right now is what he said. I call it purchase agreement. I don't like contract because that makes me think of like LA fitness and I got to get out of like one of those long-term things. <laughs> um, LA fitness and like BMG yeah. like record club. Yeah. Like I'm going to get sued basically <laughs> if I cancel this contract. So I like to call them purchase agreements. So I said, yes, Mr. Banker, I'll send it right now. I stopped what I was doing. Like people are knocking on the door. I didn't care. I'm buying a piece of land for twenty five thousand. It's worth at least eighty, which is actually no what I know now. It's probably worth two hundred fifty right now. So I get it over. He signs it immediately, and I did not sleep that night. Did not sleep at all because I'm like, how the heck am I going to come up with twenty five thousand dollars? You idiot! Like I didn't think it past that. So I didn't sleep that night. My wife was leaving on a trip. Um, she took my youngest son, Zechariah. And I went out and got 33, we call them bandit signs, and they're white. And I wrote 44 acres, 38K, because I had it under contract for 25,000. I'm like, I can, I can get this thing gone for 38,000. So what is that? 14,000 profit? Uh, phone number. That's it. 44 acres, 38K, phone number. And I put out like, I put out maybe 13 or 14. I got an angry call. Get this sign off my property. And then I got another call, like at sign 25. Who are you and where are you at? I was like, oh crap. Okay. Fear set in again. And they, these were like nice Texan accent. And they're like, who are you and where are you at? And I was like, uh, Brent, and I'm right on the street. And he's like, we've been driving around for two weeks and your signs are popping up as we're driving. We sold our ranch in Texas. We have cash money. We're looking for exactly what you have. Can you meet us? And I was like, yes. So we met right at the land. We shook hands. He said he'd buy it in a, in a week. We just had to do title work and all that. And I was going to the field on that Monday. <clears throat> so I'm going to the field. They take, they're, they're taking our phones. My phone rings again. Someone else calls me. They made an offer on the spot. They said, we see what you're asking for this land. We'll give you even more. So they literally offered me 14000 over what me and the Texan just agreed on on, on Saturday. So now my heart is being ripped out of my chest because I'm like, holy cow, I already had, was going to make a $14,000 profit. Now I'm going to make like a $28,000 profit on like my fifth land deal. And I'm telling you that would have changed my life, like that extra money. So I call that Texan and I said, oh, and actually I called my, one of my mentors first and he said, Brent, I think you know the right answer here. Cause I was like, what do I do? I already shook his hand. I want to sell it to this guy though. He's going to pay me more. And he said, Brent, I think my mentor, Cody Hoffine said, I think you know the right answer. And that's pretty much it. That's where the phone call ended. So I called the Texan. I said, 
uh, I won't say his name on here, but I was like, look, here's what happened. I got a higher offer. He's like, you shook my hand. I was like, I know. Let me finish. He's like, just, I was like, so just for meeting me on the side of the road, I'm going to get, I'm going to split that $14,000 increase with you. I'm going to pay you seven grand just for meeting my, me and shaking my hand on the side of the road. What do you think? He said, no, a deal's a deal. You shook my hand. I said, I, I think I cussed and I said, okay, let's do it. Um, so I made $14,000 on that deal. So that's what, and I, and I took that money and I bought another parcel. I think I bought three parcels with that 14 grand and I just kept rolling it and rolling. I wasn't spending any of this money. Oh, well, it, it seems to me like this is the case with all land deals. They, <laughs> they start small and then they kind of gain momentum as you're already saying, now, so so what has this led to for you? Like, it hasn't stopped with just these little onesie twosie land deals, right? It's led to financial freedom, and now what are you doing with it? Yeah, I have a team now. Um, I still am involved in the process when basically we're picking a new territory. Um, so I have a team now that keeps this going. And that first hire, I, I think I briefly mentioned her. Uh, her name is Jen. And I hired her in uh, April 2017. She just paid off her house and she's about to buy a 25 acre farm. Um, you know, my team is growing with me. Um, I've now moved to Florida. We've moved our family. We've moved from Colorado Springs to Florida. We're now near my parents, we're near my wife's parents. Um, and we just choose what we want to do. My wife is actually, her book is going live um, in, in three and a half weeks. So, God bless it. Like that allowed, like, uh, land allowed my wife to be an author. And I, I'm just going to start saying a best selling author, you know, New York's Times best selling author. Um, just little things like that. It's allowed my dad, he's done 50 something land deals. My dad's been riding a lawnmower, working manual physical labor for like the last 10 years. He no longer does that. He does land full time now. So just so many people's lives have been changed by it. Man, so so cool. But you're you're also when you were telling us before we press record that you're also looking at this land not only to flip it for notes, but you're also starting to think past that and opportunities that come. So, oh yeah, as we wrap up here, share share re, uh, real quickly some of the things that you're working on. I think that could also inspire some land investors that are out there because we have a lot of people that listen to us who are already flipping land, and yeah, and maybe they haven't even gotten to the point where you are thinking. What are other possibilities for this land? There's always a way you can get a higher and better use per transaction. You know, a quarterback's about to throw the ball, and he looks first, second, third look to all his receivers. You can do that with every transaction. You know, sometimes it's first, second, third, fourth, fifth look with land. So we just decided to keep a couple of these, and we found an amazing general contractor, and he's built a couple houses for us. And we sell these things and we make like a $97,000 net profit. And it takes us eight months from the start to the finish. Or we could have just flipped it and made 20 or 30. But we waited just a little bit longer and made 3x what we would have made type thing. Um, we have recently purchased a $1.2 million parcel. And I say recently. It's actually a year ago now. Um, and the seller, we, we, pur we purchased it for $1.2 million. We uh, basically brought 600,000 to the table. The seller hold the, held the remaining 600,000 for one year, zero interest, zero payments. And we're about to pay him off. I think we owe him like 200,000 left. We're about to pay him off right now. We, we brought in partners um, from my local meetup. <laughs> That's how we found our partners. And what we're doing on this, we've already been approved for 32 townhomes by the city, stamped approval. So we're about to break ground on that. And I've got another parcel, 36 acres, which I'm really excited about. Um, I'm buying from a, a older developer. He's like 80 something years old. And we're going to put 300 and something RV pads. We're just waiting on civil engineers. That's been taking forever, by the way. Civil engineers are at a hot commodity right now. But what's really cool, this property is in Sebring, Florida, the, the 36 acres. Come to find out, I've already purchased a parcel of land from this gentleman, the same man in Colorado Springs uh, over four years ago. And we made a $78,000 assignment fee on that land. Um, it's amazing how things tie in. Yeah, it, it really is. I, I think Joey 
aptly named this podcast "Land as the Gateway Drug to Financial Success," <laughs> and I think we're going to leave it there. Brent, man, it's a lot of fun having you on the on the podcast. If someone wanted to find out more about you, what you're up to, where would they go? Yeah, thanks for asking. I mean, just go to YouTube and search Brent Bowers. I have a YouTube channel, and I'm really just pushing it. A lot of time and effort, a lot of airplane flights. Um, you have no idea how much it how much time it takes to put out a YouTube video every single day of the week. So please go and subscribe to that. That would just mean so much. Oh man, thank you again for being willing to share with our audience and uh, inspire again people to take the steps necessary to get back their nine to five. Um, and, and the freedom and, and to go away from some of the pain that you had to endure, but man, it, it's really, we're really grateful to have had you on the show and thank you as always for listening, because this is about you. It's about your financial freedom and this is your first step. So thanks again for listening and we'll catch you on the next episode. This has been the wealth without wall street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.